Many of us who saw the footage of the horrific explosion this past Tuesday in Beirut will have thought of the echoes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The mushroom cloud, the catastrophic and indiscriminate death and destruction, lives lost, hospitals overwhelmed, properties and business ruined, and the environment polluted. Of course, what we saw in Beirut, as horrific as it was, is hardly comparable to the destruction that would be wrought by a modern nuclear bomb. But it does remind us of what is at stake when we gather today, even if we do so online. For many years, the work of CND, at least from my perspective, seems to have been quite a lonely one. The threat of terrorism overshadowed what seemed to many to have become an outdated focus on nuclear weapons. There was an assumption that the Cold War had ended and with it the danger of nuclear war. But that confidence seems now to have been seriously misplaced. We are witnessing arms control agreements lapse without being renewed, and we are seeing new generations of nuclear weapons being developed, including those which are harder to monitor and control. Any sense of the largest world powers wanting to work together on the world's problems has been shown to be hollow as populist and totalitarian world leaders blame each other's countries for the coronavirus. With trade wars and slanging matches between the US, China and Russia, there isn't a great hope for coming together around a new framework for nuclear non-proliferation. At the same time, the list of countries with nuclear weapons gets longer and the agreement with Iran that was working has been unilaterally ditched by Washington while North Korea gets ever closer to having nuclear capability if it hasn't already. Our pandemic has shown us, both within nation states and internationally, that looking after one another and particularly looking after the weakest among us is critical to the health of all of us. Our world is finally beginning to wake up to the climate cat catastrophe that we are walking into. So the case for nuclear disarmament, seen in the light of both of these realities, is becoming stronger and stronger. Pope Francis, when he visited Hiroshima and Nagasaki last November, spoke of the deepest longings of the human heart for security, for peace and for stability. And he challenged the assumption that our world has worked with us, that the assumption that our world has worked with for so long, that we can build this peace and international stability on the foundation of a fear of mutually assured destruction. International peace is built on trust, on solidarity and mutual self-interest, promoted by leaders who act with integrity and wisdom and who are held to account by ordinary people like you and me. But I come back to those images from Beirut, reminding us of what happened on a far greater scale in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which we remember today, and which pale in comparison with what today's nuclear bombs can destroy. This is about people. This is about a choice between spending our money on schools and hospitals and care homes, or on weapons that can indiscriminately kill and maim and destroy. As Pope Francis prayed the prayer of St Francis of Assisi, standing at that, at that memorial in Nagasaki. God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. <laughs>